Hello and welcome to the third episode of Fem Inc. on Sylvia Global. It's my pleasure to be coming to you today live from the ITVS offices in San Francisco, where I will be joined by the brilliant team behind the initiative Women and Girls Lead. My name is Rachel Payne, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Fem Inc. Fem Inc. is a technology and entertainment company that focuses on promoting positive female portrayals in popular entertainment. A summary on what ITVS is, it's an organization that was chartered by Congress about 21 years ago to fund independent producers to make programs that were about underserved and underrepresented voices into the PBS public television system. As an organization, we have two series on U.S. television. We have Independent Lands, which is Emmy Award winning, and we have Global Voices, which is all international programs. Through the years, we were actually seeing a groundswell of programs that were coming in about women, and so women's issues became kind of a priority for us and a focus. It's not that there aren't other priorities as well, but we really felt that it was important for us to develop a women's campaign. So we launched that about two years ago in the United States and um, to give us an overview of what that looks like here in the U.S., I will introduce Loxy Ferra. A media campaign designed to celebrate and to educate and to focus women and girls and their allies across the globe um, to face and address the challenges uh, a women and girls face in the 21st century. Um, the campaign is actually under the umbrella of the Independent Television Service, ITVS, and we have over 50 documentary films, independent documentary films, that are part of our Women and Girls Lead catalog. We also work with over 100 NGO partners, partners like CARE, um, Girl Scouts of the USA, Women's World Banking, and the Gina Davis Institute for Gender and Media, which is also a partner of Fem Inc. And, uh, and we work actually in partnership with NGO partners and public media partners, an entire network of public television stations and public media partners across the United States in order to mobilize audiences um, to activate and educate uh, people throughout the United States to get a better understanding of, about gender equality and also um, using documentary film as a way of turning the dial in, in um, women's uh, empowerment here in the United States, but also really focusing on positive images of women in leadership roles, women and girls in leadership roles. Um, we broadcast women and girls lead films through PBS through a variety of series and strands, including Independent Lens. Um, we are also in the online space with social media campaigns. We do online social screenings. We also have interactive games that are free and available for people to, to use online. And we also have a variety of shorts that people can watch through our YouTube channel or through womenandgirlslead.org. Um, we are also in communities with our community cinema program with over a hundred cities across the country that are doing community-oriented screenings of women and girls lead films. We also have a variety of resources and educator, um, uh, um, educator resources and film modules um, for high school students uh, that use women and girls lead films in order to activate conversations and dialogue about the importance of investing in women and girls, both here domestically in the United States and abroad. Um, we also um, want, with the campaign, one of our goals mainly, I should say, um, is not only to engage people um, in watching uh, content that is inspiring not only to women and girls, but also men and boys, but to, the content also serves as a mirror for audiences to see themselves in, in these amazing and inspiring women that are featured as subjects in our documentary films. And I think um, being inspired is always the first step for women and girls to, to, to seek uh, uh, their own personal development and to seek out those opportunities and the education and those positions that will help elevate them to, to, um, to reach their fullest potential, basically. Um, uh, women and Girls Lead, um, I find it inspiring for myself, uh, working on this campaign as a manager. To, be, to have access to this type of content and to be able to deliver this content not only to the PBS system but on the ground to communities and online as just an amazing opportunity to, to inspire at large U.S. audiences. 
So that's a little bit about the campaign. I think I maybe went a little bit astray. That's, that's <laughs> but, wonderful. Uh, but I, uh, I, thought, I think that that's what inspires me mostly about the campaign, and that's what I wanted to convey. Sure. I'm Kimberly Sedsvik, and I'm the Director of International Engagement for Women and Girls Lead Global, which is the <clears throat> international arm of Women and Girls Lead. So um, maybe Judy Tan can tell us a little bit about how Women and Girls Lead Global evolved from Women and Girls Lead, the domestic. Okay, thank you once again. Um, this project, Women and Girls Lead Global, was a, um, was a I don't know, was, was an idea. It was an idea of expanding our Women and Girls Lead to nine other countries. Okay, it includes Bangladesh, India, Jordan, Egypt, Kenya, Malawi, Peru, Colombia, and El Salvador. It's funded by USAID and by the Ford Foundation, and it really is a um, it is an effort to create public awareness in five of the countries, and in four of the countries, it's about um, social change. So, what it is was that the the project launched in September of last year, and we have taken our media and created a women and girls series that is 10 parts and there's three buckets in this project. The first bucket is broadcast so it's a distribution on public television systems around the world and then it's then the engagement piece which I'll let Kim give more specifics on and then it's also measurement and evaluation to see whether this project itself is has the full impact that it should. Mm -hmm. It is something that is new to ITVS and it's also new to USAID because it's using public media as it's using public media as uh, a educational resource. It's to connect all the NGOs and all of the the uh, leaders in these different countries to help them see that there is a united effort that each country can share because gender-based violence is an issue around the world at this per period of time and, and it has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. Fine. And um, maternal health, safety, empowerment, uh, child marriage, those are all just a, a few examples of some of the um, struggles that each of the countries are, are having and I think that we're reading in the news quite frequently these days that as we go through this period of economic crisis and we go through um, turmoil that the women and the girls seem to suffer, not really seem to, but they do suffer more. Mm -hmm. So we in the United States have more women than men, but in many countries the, the men are starting to outnumber the women because of the, the um, a high level of mortality. So I will go back to Kim so that she can give us more specifics on our engagement campaign. And it sounds to me, Judy, that this global initiative is really, it's a matter of life and death. We're talking about very serious conditions that so many of the world's girls, especially, are dealing with. And it's interesting that it's an extension of what started in the U.S., but is now revolving maybe around a different set of issues, exactly. um, though related, perhaps, uh, of a nature that's unique to the yes. conditions in that particular environment. Yes. I think it, it, I think it was always um, an effort that we were doing here in the United States, and it became so successful. The engagement, the community screenings, the connection to all the NGOs and all of the thought leaders, that it just made sense that we did more than just the U.S. and that we actually expanded it to other countries, but other key countries. Mm -hmm. So, and on that note, <laughs> we'll go back to Kim. Right, so what we're doing with the engagement part of Women and Girls League Global is we're, um, as we do here in the U.S., we're giving the films a life beyond the broadcast, bringing them into communities, often very remote communities that might not have access to broadcast television, and we're um, sharing them with communities in partnership with NGOs, the same way that we do here. But in each country where we're working these four social change countries, um, we've hired an engagement coordinator. And that engagement coordinator is um, designing a campaign 
for Change. And that campaign is really focused on one gender issue that he or she has surfaced in conversation with government ministries, in conversation with a whole coalition of NGOs that focus on gender issues as one of the most pressing gender issues that that country is facing at the moment, and one where there's also momentum around change. So for example, in India, the issue is gender-based violence, and that's coming in the wake of the Delhi gang rape case, which got deservedly so much attention, and so many organizations and activists in India are saying, what can we actually do about this? And so this campaign will use film as a way of starting conversations among school children, among men's groups, among um, women's savings groups, but a whole, a whole bunch of different types of groups talking about gender roles, talking about masculinity and how it's conceived in India and how that might be contributing to gender-based violence. And then the NGOs will connect those groups with ways they can take action. Mm. So that, the conversations that, evolve, that, that come up after those film screenings will, um, will be characterized by some brainstorming um, about solutions and how they might apply in that community. So I think one thing that's really interesting about this project as well as a very global reach and perspective, it's there's a lot of local ownership. Mm -hmm. um, the project coordinators in each country are nationals of that country. They're working with steering committees made up of NGO representatives who are nationals of that country. And they're, um, they're working very closely with communities in those countries to create um, ideas for solutions that are very homegrown. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I have to ask the question, are women at the table in terms of the planning for those solutions and the way in which they're approaching action campaigns around these issues? Yes, yeah. the women are very much at the table. Um, I would say that, not, not by design, that, that most of the members of the steering committee are going to women and that there will be a lot of focus on women's groups in each of these campaigns and sharing the films of women's groups and, and empowering women's groups. But I think one thing that's really essential is that men are involved as well because there's, you know, they're obviously part of this conversation and there, there needs to be um, a dynamic between the sexes for women to be able to take leadership positions. They're, they're, mm -hmm. It can't be a one-sided kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting that two of our country engagement coordinators are men and are very much not just sensitive to the issues, but um, have really innovative and, um, and well-researched ideas about how to work with men to open them up to what I think has been siloed too often as something that's, you know, this is only <coughs> almost ghettoized in some ways. This is a women's issue and mm -hmm. only women can deal with it. But if men and boys actually aren't involved in, in talking about it as well and aren't on board with it, then I don't think we can create change at a large scale. Yeah. And can I just add to that? Um, I just want to add to that that we're also working with CARE uh, globally. And in El Salvador, we we're going to be working with UN Women. So it, it's very important. I think the, Kim, the points that Kim has just made is it's very important for us to include, you know, um, men and women in this conversation because change can only happen if you actually involve, you know, uh, everyone in, in the society. But definitely women's organizations, you know, are key partners for us. Mm -hmm. It seems that there's this very clear link between the role of media and entertainment and social impact in your model. How do you think about that in terms of these films acting as a lever for maybe breaking down some of the norms that prevent women and girls from attaining leadership positions or having to be culturally acceptable to be leaders or to take a charge on some of the issues that are most um, persistent and insidious? What are your thoughts about that? Um, I'll let uh, Loxy and Kim add to this too, but I think that media is very powerful. It's powerful around the world, and I think that using public television as the vehicle for this uh, exposure was uh, one of the things that we took into consideration when we were um, when we were structuring this this campaign and this project itself. So. 
one key element of these women, uh, these programs about women in the 10 part series is that they're all international. There's one program that's domestic and the rest of them are all international stories because we want communities to see the, the struggles that they face mm -hmm. are the same struggles that they face in other countries. So there's a shareability to a story. A story in India can be the same story as in any part of Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as in South America and Latin America. So whether it's here in the U.S. or it's around the world, there are some stories that resonate throughout the world. Yes, and there's actually there's an anthropological um, uh, concept called eliciting, which um, is, is a technique used to get people to open up about some, an experience they're having that might be a struggle by uh, getting them to talk about it in the third person. So to see the way it's happening in another culture is one way that it's a little bit less threatening to talk about how it's showing up in another culture and then to kind of turn the lens back on your own community and talk about well, how might we address that or even to come up with a solution for another community. You're watching a film and you're seeing child marriage happening in Afghanistan and you're in India and you're helping solve the problem there. And then to have questions that, that help you think about, well, you know, how are we experiencing that problem here and are there things that we just talked about as far as solutions that we might apply to our own community. Um, but I think, I think the common thread of what we're all saying here is not only just documentary film, but just the power of storytelling. The impact that a story has, that a story is, is um, across all cultures, has a deep impact in, in all communities and all individuals. But as far as um, your question also about media, um, and particularly here within the United States, um, with, uh, um, you know, um, we, we do here in the United States create a great deal of media that goes, you know, abroad and um, it is also uh, uh, digested here in the United States and um, through a lot of the work that Fenning does and the, Gen the Gina Davis Institute for Gender and Media, it is very obvious through all the reports that there is just a, a massive gap of positive images of women and girls on television in the United States and, and I believe that um, through Women and Girls Link campaign um, is it's responding to that by providing a, a wealth, a collection of films of positive uh, uh, <clears throat> women in, in, po in positive leadership roles and, and girls that are being represented as change makers in their own communities. So the, the campaign uh, both domestically and internationally is, is a response to that, the need mm -hmm. for this content in order to promote this dialogue that will eventually lead to, um, you know, maybe positive outcomes as far as how uh, a society um, sees a woman or a girl and her capacities and her potential, and to not rely on gender stereotypes or pigeonhole women in, in a certain category, but that women are so much more than that. And doc the documentary films that we um, use and the power of public media is really just an extension of um, uh, uh, what people are, are wanting out there is to digest more positive images uh, of women. So, so this is all very exciting and so needed, I think. Um, you mentioned something about the relatability of what they're watching and being able to apply that in their own lives. Um, and you, you had also mentioned, Kim, that there's this need to understand that the, the, the issue isn't just here, but it's, it's everywhere, and there is that shared experience. Um, what, if you were to dream big, <laughs> what would be some of the outcomes that you would like to see with this initiative, given so many of the thoughtful uh, processes that you went through to develop it, and the way in which you're really building an inclusive and comprehensive approach to a very complex set of challenges? I think we have to some, somewhat separate that question just because I think that what we're hoping and expecting here in the U.S. is the changes that affect people in a positive way, as Loxie was saying. So whether it's a documentary like Invisible War, which has created uh, the conversation and has made some shifts in policy, Major shifts, and major, in fact, major this shifts. week and next, right, right. a lot major, of activity on the Hill. Major shifts congressionally. Mm -hmm. That's what 
that's part of what we can hope for here to deal with domestic violence, to deal with safety issues here in the United States. It's much more basic internationally, hmm. globally. Hmm. I think that if, in fact, we can, uh, I, I just came back from El Salvador last week, okay, and so this is where in El Salvador they're doing some women protection uh, laws that are going are uh, coming into place in El Salvador, but they're long time coming and even if the law exists, there's still implementation and there's hopes that people will understand and recognize that women deserve safety. They deserve education. They deserve to have some voice in government and so those needs are much more basic in a country like El Salvador. When you're talking about Malawi and Kenya, the issues are going to be slightly different. But it's, a, it's similar in the fact that we're hoping that not only will these um, safety and education issues raise to the, the level of creating laws, but we want the awareness to help shift or change the situation because with a lot of these countries we have cultures and traditions that basically keep women in an unsafe position especially you know probably when you're talking about uh, areas of the Middle East or I mean in in many ways it's all all regions of the world but in some regions it's going to be more significant problem. Mm -hmm. you want to add to that yeah, I would like to. Um, thanks. I, I can tell you a little bit specifically about some of the campaigns that are taking shape and some of the objectives that we're setting for them. So everything is just still percolating, but um, to speak to what Loxie said about these films being really inspiring, I think um, one of the things that I've heard from NGO leaders uh, when I went to these different social change countries and met with them is that they're excited about these films because there are too few examples of women in the global south as leaders. And these films portray women um, doing incredible things. And especially, I'd say, in remote, some of the remote, remote communities, the poor communities where we're working, to be able to open up that window on the world to communities and show there are women who come from backgrounds like you, who are inc amazing leaders, who are doing really important things. It's just that little spark that might go off in a girl's head to say, maybe I can do that too. That's kind of the theoretical, right? The dreamy part of it. But the, the more tactical part of it is that we that's why we're creating campaigns and there's a lot of strategy behind them. So it's to look at where is Kenya right now as far as women's leadership. And one of the opportunities that we see is that the new constitution in Kenya um, mandates that one third of um, representatives in the legislature are women. And yet, there aren't a lot of women who are really prepared to step into those positions. So one of the ways we'd like to use film is to be working with young emerging leaders, to use these films to start conversations about leadership, to, to use a film like Taking Root about Wangari Maathai, who was an incredible Kenyan woman who right. you know, defied yeah. all kinds of <laughs> uh, criticism and, uh, and gender stereotypes to eventually become a Nobel Prize winner, but to really lead, lead a conservation movement in her country. So to be able to share a film like that and to start a conversation about what can you do in your life, if you know you've seen this woman do this, maybe there's more possibilities than you'd ever <coughs> thought. So that's wonderful. That's one of the things that we're doing. Um, so just to give a quick plug, um, so one garment, Dr. One Garment, I was um, the founder of the Greenbelt Movement, and they've planted 40 million trees, I believe it is. Um, and she also wrote a fabulous book called Unbowed, so I definitely would recommend that to everyone. I had the great fortune of um, working with her in Kenya for some period of time, and was just an incredible individual. That film is actually going to be rebroadcasting on our Global Voices series. Excellent. Um, this summer. Yes. So um, it's going to be rebroadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful film. It's a favorite, actually, of all of our NGO partners. So that will that film will be broadcasting here in the United States um, uh, later this summer, and you can go to womeninvolvedleague.org to find out more information about that. I think that's a great segue for us to take a look at womeninvolvedleague.org. 
um, and also at ITVS, just to give everyone an idea of um, what it is you're doing in a more practical way. And what I would really appreciate is a chance to um, hear about some of the examples of the collaborators that you've been working with. I know you're working with Half the Sky, Nicholas Kristoff and um, Cheryl Wudan, and you're doing a lot of work. Um, you mentioned things in the Civil War. So it'd be great to hear sort of a sampling of that, and um, maybe what we can do is sort of walk through the, the site and some of the examples that you have. Um, this is ITVS that we're looking at right now, and there are a number of different um, uh, examples here of what you're doing. Here's the Invisible War. Um, so Judy, do you want to give us maybe just a quick yeah. overview? Yeah, well, um, Half the Sky was a very successful project for us. And then uh, just recently we had Kind Hearted Woman, and that was a uh, four part, uh, four hour, five part? Okay, it was a five hour documentary um, series on Frontline. And so when I was talking about the content that we provide for the PBS system, we are are the largest content provider for, wow. for PBS. So That's our incredible. programs go on American Experience, they go on American Masters, uh, they are um, on POV, Frontline, as I said, and of course our two series. But we also are uh, bringing forward Half the Sky America. That's our next big wow. project. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So we are still uh, in the development stages, but that is something that we can all look forward to. And um, we just have a consistent slate of programs that will uh, deal with women's issues. We're doing a lot of engagement uh, activities, uh, some community screenings, and some uh, hill screenings, mm -hmm. you know, some congressional Well, screenings. Invisible War in particular. Yeah, yes, really... yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But we just came back from the PBS annual meeting mm -hmm. with uh, American Graduate Latino, which is, you know, it's... it's um, it's kind of a, a broad look at um, the landscape of uh, the dropout program, the dropout problems that the Latino community has had throughout the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of exciting programs that are kind of on the horizon. Maybe Loxie can add to that. Excellent. So we're at, let's go to Women and Girls Lead. Well, actually, if you scroll down, no, oh, it's already on there. <laughs> so this is the website for womenandgirlslead.org, and as you can see, can mm -hmm. as you can see, um, the Invisible War, uh, as as Judy mentioned, recently broadcasted on the PBS series Independent Lens just this past Monday night, and we are still having a great deal of dialogue on Women and Girls Lead um, on Facebook about the film itself, and we are also honoring in, in, in observance of uh, Memorial Day. Um, the next two weeks we are going to be featuring um, through various images and memes um, through social media, honoring um, women soldiers in, in the Wonderful. United States. Wonderful. And um, The Invisible War and another film called Rebel, um, which is also about uh, a woman who, who served in, uh, in, in the Civil War as a soldier and dressed as a man. Um, wow. <laughs> the, so we have a variety of um, wonderful documentary films. Another one that's actually set for broadcast, that is a Women and Girls Lead film, is a film called The Revolutionary Optimists. And it's a really amazing film set to broadcast also on Independent Lens on June 17th. Um, the film is, it actually um, takes place in Calcutta, India. and a lawyer turned social entrepreneur uh, uh, devised a way to, pro to create this leadership training program for, for children actually to become leaders in their own community and embark on um, creating these uh, health uh, and, uh, and um, preventative health like uh, projects in, in, in Calcutta and there's one particular uh, young girl who is uh, her name is Sika Shika, sorry, in the film, who's a subject in the film, who is just this amazing example uh, of, of a young girl in India that you do not see usually in, in films or in any kind of content, but a wonderful example of, of a young girl who is, knows herself, speaks uh, about all of her dreams and her potential, and does not allow um, gender stereotypes get in the way of who she is, and she is a fantastic speaker, a public speaker, and an amazing uh, agent of change in the film. So people should really watch that here in the United States on June 17th. And there are other examples here on um, Women and Girls Lead website of partnerships that we have. 
um, and current broadcast, as Judy mentioned, Kind Hearted Woman. We have a variety of resources also to support a, a whole slew of engaging activities that for Hack the Sky, including classroom modules. Games, uh, too. And, and a game, yes. Um, Hack the Sky did create a game. Um, we we also um, are going to launch very soon uh, a recent broadcast of Wonder Woman, this is the untold story of American superheroines, mm -hmm. broadcasted in April. We are launching this month an interactive game to support the film as well. And um, this is just a snapshot. Um, this uh, homepage is just a snapshot of some of our partners, upcoming broadcasts. Um, some of our short films and educator resources and a variety of engagement resources that is available free and open for the public to use. That's incredible. Well, it's really been such a joy to speak with each of you about this wonderful and important initiative. And uh, just to round out the um, remainder of this conversation, um, I wanted to just highlight that um, the work that we've been doing at Femme Inc. is very much about promoting this diverse range of strong, empowered females, um, both as characters in popular entertainment as well as real-life women, and hoping to create a greater bridge between um, the role models that we can see out there in real life and the kinds of characters that reflect who we really are as women and girls, multidimensional, complex human beings who have now um, the abilities and access and hopefully soon all the resources we need to occupy a greater share of positions of power but also as humans just to have a greater place in society. So um, one of the things you'll see on uh, Fen Inc. are some of the examples of curated watch lists that allow you to see examples of women taking charge, women who are unstoppable, um, a wide variety of, women, a variety of um, situations currently focusing on TV shows, but very quickly we will be ex expanding that to other formats. So um, thank you so much for your time today. It's been such a joy to speak with you. And I really look forward to um, watching uh, all the great programs that are coming out soon and tuning in to the broadcast. And I uh, wish you great luck as you roll out your international initiative as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.